I've always wanted to write. I've always read voraciously um, all my life. I've, I just love literature and I've, I've always had a particular fondness for Gothic literature. I, you know, cut my teeth on Anne Radcliffe and, and uh, Emily Bronte and then, you know, latterly sort of M.R. James. And I, I, I love narrative and I love plot and I love a great big galloping story. And I kept very detailed journals of, um, you know, when we started really working on the house from the very beginning when we first moved in and eventually had a body of work that I thought might interest other people who were restoring houses, I mean, maybe not on this scale, but, you know, um, plaster dust is plaster dust wherever it comes from, whether it's a cottage, a flat or a, or a castle. And so I put the book together and then, yes, then I sent it off to an agent and was lucky enough to get a, to get a publishing deal. You don't own a house like Gwitter, it's like trying to... It would be like owning air, we're just its custodians for a very small... And probably the least significant part of its history is uh, bound up with us. You know, we're, we play a very... We're, you know, we're a very small cog in Gwitter's history. And uh, it also gives you a terrific sense of your own mortality living in a, living in a place like Gwitter. You realise that you're here for such a fleeting second. And if you can do something, uh, you know, worthwhile, if we can just safeguard it for the moment that we're here, then, then you know, that's, that's a great thing. We're very lucky because we're a bit more comfortable now than we were 20 years ago, so it's lovely to have this um, small corner of the house uh, for our, well, a room of my own, really. And uh, Peter has his studio next door, so we're fairly close together. And it's a really tranquil part of the house, and I don't... Um, we don't get sort of bothered by sound. I think Widder is a really wonderful place for the imagination. It's like opening a portal onto another world. It's just a great release for the imagination. And so creatively, I find it a very exciting space to work in. The most important family connected with the house is, of course, the Wynne family, an you know, ancient old Welsh family who are very proud of their Welsh genealogy and consequently left their initials all over the house. Sir John Wynne, who was one of the most interesting Wynnes to have been connected with the house, wrote a book called The History of the Gwydda Family in 1580. And it tells us so much about early life at Gwydda. For example, it tells us that there were 40 servants living here. Of course, now there are just, just two of us, so um, how things change. Sometimes the, the, the energy is just so thickly layered. There's a sort of palimpsest of... of historical periods here, all, you know, all sort of racked up, and you, you just get that amazing sense of, of, of atmosphere. It's wonderful for me that, you know, Gwydda, of course, has a ghost, and that's, that's lovely. It's all part of that, that Gothic thing. Thankfully, we don't have any problems with our ghosts these days, so that's all, that's all finished. But it, you can, you know, on a quiet night, you can actually, you can just that, there's that tangible sense of touching the past, and you, you feel you can experience some of those past inhabitants. So this room has the unenviable title of the, uh, of the ghost room. It's been called the ghost room for a long, long time. This is where all the activity happens, the ghostly activity happens, and uh, it's... It said that uh, a servant girl was murdered by Sir John Wynne and she was walled up in this part of the house and it was the smell of her decomposing body which, which gave him away so he made a deathbed confession admitting to the murder. So, um, but for me, I, I, you know, I now, now I love this room. It's, it's again very atmospheric and uh, it's very redolent of, uh, of Gwydda's past and uh, it, yeah, it has a lovely, lovely atmosphere now for me. Actually, when we were putting in the dining room, we had a collapse actually in one of the foundation struts and out rolled a, a cache of, of, of bones. And uh, it was just at the time when we were seeing, a, funnily enough, a, a third dog. We have, we have our own dogs. And lots of people were seeing a third dog around the house. It was just at the time of the Fred West murders and we uh, uh, contacted the police because we wanted to get a pathologist's report on the, uh, on the bones. And of course, the police completely sort of overreacted and cordoned off the entire house. And uh, yeah, the pathologist's report came back that they were in fact the bones of an ancient dog. So it must have been that we might have maybe disturbed uh, something down there in that cellar. I don't know, when a floorboard creaks or a, or a door shuts on its own, you do take a, a double take, but it's, it's lovely to have that sense of, um, you know, good as ghosts and good as past inhabitants are still, hopefully they have now have smiles on their faces. 
It's a very different house to the house we found in 1994. You know, it's a completely different house. Then it was, you know, it was sad. It was really sad and it wasn't being cared for. It wasn't being looked after. I, I think now, 20 years on, people do say that the atmosphere has changed dramatically in the house and it, it's, it's actually got a very light atmosphere and, it, and it, I hope it knows it's loved <laughs> more, than, more than anything, you know, because we're both so passionate about it and, and want only the best for Gwida and, and hopefully that'll, That'll, you know, it's going to be here for another 400 years, who knows, and, and um, it's lovely to have been able to maybe facilitate a little part of that.